Did you know that in Redshift for Cinema 4D you can use two simple tricks to extend the functionality of ambient occlusion? With the ambient occlusion node, or AO for short, the name says it all. The shader samples the environment of a surface hemispherically in the direction of its polygon normals. By this it determines whether the surface is occluded by other objects. Depending on how strong this ambient occlusion is, the object's surface will be darkened more or less. Doing so, AO looks like a diffuse shadow but is completely independent of the incidence of light. There are three parameters to be balanced. Max distance defines how far AO samples its surroundings. The default value 0 samples the environment to a maximum depth. However, if the value is raised above 0, the values are roughly units in centimeters. Spread determines the softness of the generated darkening and falloff defines the decrease curve of the softness. Let's have a look at two use cases. Sometimes it may be necessary to make the result of AO a little stronger and more contrasty. The most obvious way to do so is to remap AO with a ramp node, but if you look at the result in the progressive mode of the render view, it just doesn't work. To make it work, you have to consider two things. First, only bucket render mode will display the remapping correctly. This is due to the different technical backgrounds of AO in progressive and bucket mode. And, as interpolation method for the ramp node, smooth will do the job, but if you're out for strong definition and crisp contrast, try step interpolation. In a second use case, we may wish that transparent areas of a texture are also taken into account by ambient occlusion. But you won't find any parameter for this in the AO node. Instead, we must ensure that the alpha map of the partially transparent object is created using a sprite node. The sprite node is usually placed between the standard material node and the output node and defines the source for an area to be punched out in its texture path. This completely removes the punched out area from all calculations and thus also from ambient occlusion. So, as we saw with these two use cases, we can easily extend the functionality of the ambient occlusion node in Ratchet for Cinema 4D. If you like this video, press the subscribe button and don't miss the next episode of Did You Know Ratchet for Cinema 4D? every shiny Wednesday on this channel.